you guys inside and show you um, what it looks like before we start to rip everything out. So come on in. Very much still an original ambulance. It even smells kind of like what I think an ambulance would smell like, although I've never been in one in real life, but it has that kind of like medicine-y, kind of weird smell, and we found some like extra gauze and like extra band-aids and stuff in here, so we can add those to our first aid kit. So one of the reasons why we wanted this specific ambulance, um, and Andrew will talk to you more about all of the specifications of it, um, but we really wanted the headroom. So I'm like five foot 11, so it was kind of hard to find something in an ambulance, at least in Canada, that had enough headroom. So if I stand under the bar, I'm actually still touching. So we will have to take this out so I'm not smoking my head off of it in the middle of the night. So we're gonna do the pretty typical van conversion build where you have the bed at the back. Uh, we were pretty adamant that we wanted to do a fixed bed, so we don't want a bed that goes up and down. We don't want a table that converts into a bed because I think Andrew and I know ourselves well enough to know that we wouldn't be taking the bed like up and down. It would either stay as a table and we would sleep on the couches or it would always be a bed and we would never have a table. Um, we don't even make our bed in our house now, which literally takes two seconds. So I can't imagine that we would be messing around with it on a daily basis. Here in the van. So we're going to do a fixed bed at the back. Um, you can see we have some tape here where we think the bed's going to come out to and we're lucky because it's about eight feet wide the box so we're able to actually sleep this way so it takes up like less space in the main part of the van. Unfortunately with this particular ambulance because of where the outside and inside compartments are built in, we are going to have to cut into them to get the width for the van. Um, but that's Andrew's problem, not mine. He's figuring out how all of that's gonna work. Uh, but yeah, this is gonna be the bed. Um, it's gonna be a little bit higher so we can have like a nice garage underneath at the back. And then moving through into the living area, we're gonna kind of try to build off of what is already here uh, because as you can see, we have seat belts. So we're gonna do our best to kind of build our eating area to incorporate two of these seat belts. Um, because I mean, my understanding is that it's pretty hard to put in new seat belts yourself from like a certification, insurance, safety perspective. So. If we can keep the ones that are already here, uh, we'll be able to have more seats in the van. So ideally, we're gonna make this window a ton bigger, um, keep these two seat belts, and have a little bit of like an L-shaped seating area right here that's like against the bed. Um, and then we'll have, you know, a table that's all like swivelly and can move around, um, just like you see in a lot of the van builds. So I am sitting where we are going to have our bathroom. This is actually the exact spot where right now we're planning on putting our toilet, although I won't be facing this way. I'll be spun around and facing this way. There will be a nice wall here. Um, Andrew and I talked about a lot of different options for bathrooms, but I think we were on the same page right from the beginning that the toilet was going to be enclosed in its own fixed space none of these like the toilets that slide out and you're just like using the toilet in the open in the middle of the van um, we figured we try to preserve just like a little bit of mystery um, in our relationship so as much as you can when you're living in a van together so the toilet's gonna be here and then right here is going to be the shower um, so now we're back up at the front of the van and this is where our kitchen is going to be so right here we're thinking is going to be a great spot for the sink because the bathroom we think is going to come probably somewhere to like maybe here ish so that leaves us all of this space to put a sink and then all of the plumbing is over here on one side of the van um, which might make Andrew's life just a little bit easier when he's trying to figure out how all that stuff's going to work so sink will be here this we're going to be taking out altogether so we can have a bit more of an open pass through 
Although at some point we think we will put like a sliding door or something like that. So here will be the main part of the kitchen. Obviously swivel chair is going to go. This huge cabinet is going to go um, and we'll have something a little bit smaller and less invasive. Uh, so this will be main countertop space. The fridge will be somewhere under here, although we're struggling with that just a little bit because all of the electrical and the batteries and stuff are going to be under here. So it kind of limits where we can put the fridge, but we're going to figure something out. Um, and we might have it wrap around just a little bit this way, just to give us like a little bit more counter space. Um, but that's all kind of to be determined. Um, we're going to be taking all of this stuff out and Andrew will show you, Andrew will show you what's in here. Um, when I saw it, I kind of freaked out, but I'm not the one that's going to have to figure it out. So it's a good thing for everyone. So we're considering taking all of this stuff out and maybe putting like a long skinny window here for more light, but that'll kind of be down the road. That'll kind of depend how things go. So yeah, as Meg was saying, in the special cabinet, we have the, like the original ambulance electrical system. It looks a little daunting at first. But with some wiring drawings, it actually isn't so bad to, to play with. So we're planning on maybe moving this around, maybe put that down in the electrical cabinet. When we go outside, we'll talk about that. We're going to most likely put some Victron stuff in there. Um, we'll do a whole build out on all the Victron solar charging and everything. And all these switch panels, we're going to reuse all the switches um, and kind of repurpose them. Right now, they're just for all the lights and uh, all the exhaust fans. And the original AC units in here with the heater, we're going to rip that out and most likely go with the Dometic, just the 120 volt Dometic on the roof. A bunch of radios will move up to the front and then just a bunch more switches that are needed, but we'll repurpose them out throughout the van. All right, so now we're up in the, in the driver's seat. Everything else is pretty much standard to what a 4500 Kodiak is. The only thing different is the main ambulance control panel. Here you'll have all your, all your master switches, uh, floodlights. Uh, okay, that's that, yeah. <laughs> Did you break the backup camera, babe? I need that. And we have our main ambulance control panel, um, all our master switches, all our flashers, lights, all the floodlights are on the whole side. We're gonna keep those. It's basically a 360 floodlight. That doesn't work. So anyway, this is the outside. As we're talking inside, kind of where the kitchenette's gonna be. It's kind of sitting here. And then this is where we're gonna put all our electrical. So we're talking all our Victron inverters, uh, all the solar charging, all the batteries are gonna be in here. It does come with uh, a 12 volt air compressor. So we're gonna have onboard air. If you ever get a flat tire somewhere. Uh, it's pretty big. Obviously this door doesn't work. That's going to be on the list to fix, um, but there's quite a bit of room in there. So all the electrical panel up top should fit in pretty nicely, maybe along the side. And then we got all our Victron stuff here, all our batteries in the bottom, keeps everything out of the living compartment. So and if we head to the back, so here's what we're talking about the window. We're probably going to end up cutting it quite a bit bigger. We're going to double the size, go with maybe a turn overland window. And then on the back side here, another large compartment. We're gonna be cutting it down a little bit to fit our bed in here. But then basically from here down, it's gonna be storage of tools, uh, maybe our dirty boots, our biking stuff is gonna be kind of in this section. All right, so we're on the other side of the van now, as you can see, our main entrance. And then other side compartment. So we're gonna do the same thing. Cut most of this down for the bed. Another door that doesn't work, we have to fix. But yeah, we're gonna be cutting this down again. And this side's gonna be more for plumbing. So we're gonna have all our pumps in here, all our filters in here, uh, everything we need for that. And then all our water tanks are gonna sit up underneath here. We're just gonna put like gray water tank, fresh water tank, um, and everything will be kind of plumbed into there with all our drains. We're gonna turn this into our garage. So our bed is gonna be kind of this is where we're going to be cutting them down. And then all in here is going to be about a five foot box. We put our, be able to fit both our bikes in here. Again, all more of our dirty gear, maybe a stand-up paddleboard, like an inflatable one, and we'll just have that all clean inside. So something that 
I feel really lucky about is that we sort of bought this ambulance sight unseen. We yeah. weren't able to see it before we bought it, um, which made me pretty nervous. I was pretty nervous too. It was pretty risky. Yeah. Well, you didn't seem nervous at the time. <laughs> I was like, what if, I was sort of like, what if it's like a total piece of trash and it has all kinds of stuff wrong with it? Um, and this guy was like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, I can fix it. I'll put in a new engine. Like, it's no big deal. It's fine. What's the worst that's going to happen? It's going to have a blown engine. It's fine. We can fix that. Yeah. So he was so confident that it made me feel confident. Um, and so I'm just really lucky that I'm building it out with someone who says things like, oh, I'll just do a 4x4 conversion. Um, <laughs> I didn't even know that that was something that was possible to do. Um, so I'm going to have a lot of fun filming Andrew while he tries to do all of this stuff. And I'm going to ask him so many stupid questions, which might yeah. be the same questions that you guys might have if you're not as mechanically minded as he is. And that's fine. I'm going to do that and I'm going to get out of painting because she loves painting and I hate painting. So yeah, that's but the painting on the van is already done. Yeah. So I think I'm, I'm kind of in a win-win situation we'll here. See. Andrew, not so much. Maybe we'll change the color. We'll see. I don't think so. <laughs> that's it for our uh, pre-demo, pre-build ambulance tour. Please like and subscribe to our channel, and also head over to Instagram. You can find us at Rogue Roamers on there as well. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, that's it for us for today.